All right, folks. So I mentioned to a couple of people in the group that I've been working on a variable FET setup. And essentially, <clears throat> what, um, what people have asked for is, hey, can I hook a potentiometer up to a FET and get a variable output? And the answer is technically yes. You could connect a FET, a pot to a FET, and you will get a variable output. But what will happen is your FET will then act as a resistor, series resistance, uh, in line with your <clears throat> atomizer. And whatever power isn't dropped across the atomizer will then be dropped across the FET. The FET will get hot, and that's bad. It's not what we want. So, someone suggested, uh, Derek uh, Only Clones Jones suggested using a uh, uh, pulse width modulation. And uh, I said, fuck yeah. And I came up with, I, well, I didn't come up with this. I dug this up. This is someone else's work that I implemented. And anyway, so this is, this is what it is. Uh, we have a chip that I use with diodes and a pot and a couple of caps <clears throat> to create a, uh, a pulse train. And uh, so now I have these pulses. It runs at about 2,000 hertz, if, if I uh, did the math right. It's been a long time since I've used a, an old-school oscope. Uh, this thing kind of sits under the desk mostly. Anyway, so the point is, this never, the, the MOSFET is never turned on halfway or partway. It's either off, this is zero, or it's on, and that's about 3.7, 3.8 volts. That's where my batteries are at right now, or my battery. So, it turns it off, and it turns it on. So, all it ever does is conducts completely or not at all. But this gap here, the time when it isn't conducting, is energy not sent to the atomizer. And this is just like if you've ever watched a P. Bizzardo video. This is just like the the PWM you see in crappy Chinese e-cigs, except this is a lot faster. The Chinese e-cigs are at about 33 hertz. This is about 2,000 hertz. So you're not going to get a rattlesnake. You're not going to get... Uh, you shouldn't get any uh, degradation in performance. What you will get, though, is a variable output. I'm about halfway right now, and I can turn this pot, and I can turn it down. It's going to lose the, the trigger here in a second, the lower. Yeah, see, once I get down below a certain point. So you can have a very small amount. I mean, that's like maybe 10% of, uh, of your total. And you can keep turning it up and keep turning it up and keep turning it up until you're at about full. It can't even, if you get in close enough, you can see it's, it actually is pulsing, but very minimally. Um, so that's, uh, that's the point, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm shooting for. And uh, I have a small load on there. I haven't tested this with an atomizer yet. I'm not comfortable powering an atomizer with, uh, with the board, with my breadboard, uh, quite yet. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. I'm going to build this into a mod, or three, and uh, I may pull, put a couple up for sale. I don't know. Uh, this should work with, uh, this will work with parallel and series. Uh, series is a little more complicated because this guy right here uh, has a max input of six volts, so I have to, <clears throat> I have to give it a, uh, a separate power supply, which is no big deal. That's... Uh, that's fairly easy. But it's just more components. So I gotta do that, I gotta work that, and uh, otherwise, it's all good. This is, by the way, an IRL, IRLB uh, 3030 that I'm using. So this is, uh, make sure you guys can see that. It's legit. This is, uh, this is exactly what it would be like in the mod. Just uh, solder together. Anyway, let me know what you think.